Welcome to a lesson on perpendicular transversals of parallel lines. The goals of the video are to define a perpendicular transversal of two parallel lines and then we'll prove two theorems involving a perpendicular transversal. When two parallel lines, as we see here in black, are cut by a perpendicular transversal, as we see here in red, eight right angles are formed. Remember we can mark right angles using this little box as we see here. So angles one through eight are right angles and therefore they all measure 90 degrees. Let's take a look at our first theorem. If two lines are perpendicular to the same line, they are parallel to each other. More specifically, if line L is perpendicular to line N and line N is perpendicular to line M, we want to prove that L and M are parallel. This is going to be a pretty straightforward proof. Remember, if we know that these lines are perpendicular, they intersect and form right angles. Looking at our diagram here, if we consider angle two and angle six, we know they're both right angles because they were formed by perpendicular lines. Therefore, they measure 90 degrees. And the reason I selected angle two and angle six is because those are corresponding angles. So if corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines would have to be parallel due to the corresponding angles converse. So let's go ahead and write this out. Step one will be the given. L is perpendicular to N and N is perpendicular to line M. This is given. So because these are perpendicular, again, we'll stick with corresponding angles two and six. Angle two and angle six are right angles. This is by definition of perpendicular lines. And if they're right angles, that means they measure 90 degrees. And this is by definition of right angles. And if angle two and angle six have the same measure, that means the two angles would be congruent. By definition of congruent angles, and so if angle two and angle six are congruent and their corresponding angles, we can conclude that line L must be parallel to line M, and this would be by the corresponding angles converse. Let's go and take a look at our next theorem. We want to prove if two lines are parallel and the third line is perpendicular to one of the lines, it is perpendicular to the other line as well. So if we know these two lines here are parallel, line L and line M, and line L is perpendicular to line N, we want to prove that it's also perpendicular to line M. So again, let's talk strategy. We know if L and N are perpendicular, angles one through four are right angles, and therefore they measure 90 degrees. And then if we know line L and M are parallel, we know that corresponding angles must be congruent. So angles one through four are congruent with angles one through eight, which means they have the same measure. So if the measure of angles one through four equal the measures of angles five through eight, they must measure 90 degrees, and therefore they're right angles, and therefore N and M would be perpendicular. So let's go ahead and start by stating the given. L is parallel to M and L is perpendicular to N. So because L is perpendicular to N, we can say angle one, angle two, angle three, and angle four are right angles. This is by definition of perpendicular lines. And if they're right angles, that means they all measure 90 degrees.
And this is by definition of right angles. Next, because L is parallel to M, we know the corresponding angles are congruent. So we can say angle one is congruent to angle five. Angle two is congruent to angle six. Angle three is congruent to angle seven. And angle four is congruent to angle eight. This is by the corresponding angle postulate. Now if we know these angles are congruent, and we also know that the measure of angles one through four is equal to 90 degrees, that means the measure of angle five, six, seven, and eight is also equal to 90 degrees. This is by definition of congruent angles. Well, if all these angles have a measure 90 degrees, that means they're right angles. This is by definition of right angles. And now we have it because if angles five, six, seven, and eight are right angles, they're formed by lines N and M. So N must be perpendicular to M. And this is by definition of perpendicular lines. And there it is. So I hope you found these two examples helpful. Thank you for watching.